Hi guys, it's Angela from Basso Knits. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this cute little coin purse. It's the perfect size for a few cards and some cash, and it's really quick and easy to crochet, so it would make a really nice gift for someone, especially if you need to whip one up in a hurry. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using US terminology, and if you have any questions, do leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the tutorial, do remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see any of my future uploads. Let's start with the materials you're going to need to make this coin purse. To start with, you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook. In America, that would be a size C. You're also going to need some cotton DK yarn. First, you're going to need a beige color. I'm actually using a bamboo cotton for the beige and I'm using the one from King Cole in shade 3457, which is the honey color. You're also going to need some other shades of cotton DK yarn. So here I'm using the Sheepies Katona brand. So here I'm using shades 106, which is this white color. 208 which is this lovely golden yellow and I'm using six different shades of purple now you can use yarn scraps for this so any DK yarn you've got lying around and you could also just use one color you don't have to switch color but if you want the multicolor look that I've gone for then you would need some different shades so I'm using shades 508 521 113 282 128 and 394 some other tools you're going to need, you will need some scissors, a yarn needle for weaving in the ends, and a button that is 20 millimeters in diameter, or roughly that size. And finally, this is an optional step, but if you want to block your granny square before turning it into the coin purse, then you would need a blocking mat and some pins, and some no rinse wool wash. I use the Knit IQ brand that I get from Amazon. All right, let's get started. To start the coin purse, we're going to need our yellow yarn and you're going to need to start by making a magic ring. So lots of different ways to do this. I'm just going to make a loop, pull the yarn through, and then I'm going to chain one to secure. There's my magic ring. I'm now going to work the center of the flower into the magic ring. So I'm going to start by chaining five. Okay, so with the first chain I made to secure the ring, I now have six chains in total. And my first four are going to count as a treble crochet. So one, two, three, four. And then I have two chains that are going to make up a space between my stitches. I'm now going to treble crochet. And to treble crochet, I need to wrap the yarn around my hook twice. And then I'm going to go into my magic ring and pull my yarn through. So now I have four loops on my hook. I'm going to wrap round and pull through the first two loops, wrap round, pull through the second two loops and wrap round and pull through the final two loops. So that's my first treble crochet. I'm now going to chain two and I'm going to do another treble crochet. Wrap around twice into my magic ring and pull my yarn through. So I've got four loops, wrap around through the first two loops, wrap around second two loops, wrap around final two loops. And I'm going to chain two. I'm now going to repeat that pattern of treble crochet and then chain two five more times until I'm left with eight treble crochet in total. I'm now going to pull my magic ring closed and I'm going to slip stitch into the fourth chain from the center. And there is the center of my flower. So I'm now going to snip my yarn tail, pull that through, and I'm now going to move on to the first of the petals. I'm now going to attach my white yarn into one of these chain two spaces. I'm now going to single crochet one into this chain two space. So I'm going to go into the space and pull my yarn through and I'm going to wrap around and pull through both two loops. I'm now going to half double crochet into the same space. So I'm going to wrap around first this time. I'm going to go into the chain two space and pull my yarn through. And now I have three loops on my hook and I'm going to pull through all three loops. 
that's my half double crochet. I'm now going to do three double crochets into the same chain two space. So I'm going to wrap around again, just like with the half double crochet. I'm going to go into the space. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through. I'm going to wrap around and instead of going through all three loops like I did with the half double crochet, I'm going to go through the first two. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to go around and go through the second two. And that is my double crochet. I'm going to repeat that again two more times. I am now going to half double crochet again into the same chain two space. I'm going to wrap around and go into the space, pull my yarn through and pull through all three loops. And then I'm going to single crochet one into this space. I'm going to go in, grab my yarn and pull through two loops. So that's my first white petal done. And I'm going to repeat that pattern of single crochet one, half double crochet one, double crochet three, half double crochet one, single crochet one into each of the eight chain two spaces around my work. I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you can pause here if you want to take some time to complete it. So now I've made it back to the beginning, I'm just going to slip stitch back into this first stitch of the round. I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to pull it through. So there's my flower so far. I'm actually just going to weave in these ends now. Um, I often find that with granny squares and things like that where I've changed colour a lot, I actually lose motivation pretty quickly <laughs> to weave in the ends. So if I do it as I go, I don't face the daunting task at the end of having to weave in all of the ends, which is not a fun job. So I'm going to use my yarn needle and I'm just going to weave in my yarn tails back into the work to hide them. And now I'm ready to add my first shade of purple. So now I need to flip my flower over. So I'm looking at the reverse of the flower and I'm going to be attaching my purple yarn around one of these posts or one of these treble crochet posts. I'm going to insert my hook underneath one of the treble crochets. I'm going to attach my yarn and obviously you need to decide which color you are starting with, which color you would like the petals to be. So I'm just going to pull my yarn underneath one of these posts and I'm going to attach it there. Now with my working yarn, I'm going to chain six stitches. I'm then going to single crochet around this next post. So I'm going to go behind the post, grab my yarn and pull it through and then single crochet. I'm then going to repeat that, so I'm going to chain six and I'm going to single crochet around the next post. So I'm going to repeat that another six times until I have got back to the beginning again. So now I've got back to the beginning again and instead of single crocheting around the first post from the beginning of the round, I'm actually just going to slip stitch into the first chain to join it there. Neaten this out a bit. I should have eight loops that look like mini petals. I'm now going to turn my work back to, so I'm looking at the front of my work again. I'm now going to do my final row of petals on this flower by working into each of these chain sixes. So these chain loops that we made on our previous round. So I'm going to start by chaining four. I'm then going to treble crochet five into this chain six loop. So remember to treble crochet, we wrap around twice, we go into the stitch and pull our yarn through. And then we have four loops on our hook. So I'm going to pull through the first two loops and pull through the second two loops. Now, normally for a treble crochet, I would then wrap around, 
and pull through the last two loops. Actually, I'm going to leave those two on my hook and I'm going to start my next treble crochet. Okay, again, I've not worked the last stitch of that treble crochet and I'm just going to keep doing that. So wrapping around twice, pulling my yarn through, going through the first two loops, wrap around going through the second two loops, but each time leaving one of the stitches unworked on the hook. Okay, so I'm going to do that twice more. Okay, so now I have six loops on my hook. I have a loop from the chain four at the beginning of this round, and then I have five unworked stitches from my five treble crochets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around and pull through all five stitches at once. I'm then going to chain one to secure that in place. Pull it tight. Okay, now I'm going to chain four, just like I did at the beginning of this petal. And I'm going to slip stitch back into my chain six space. And then I'm going to chain four and I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain six space. So the next empty petal along. Okay, so the reason we've done that is we've now created a little loop between what will be two petals that we're going to need to use to continue our granny square later. So that bit there is going to go and work for now. And let me show you that pattern one more time. So I'm going to chain four. I'm going to treble crochet, but I'm only going to wrap around and pull through twice so that I leave one loop unworked on my hook. I'm going to do that five times so that I end up with six loops on my hook. Okay, so now I've done that five times, I'm just going to wrap around and pull through all six loops and I'm going to chain one to secure. I'm then going to chain four and slip stitch back into my chain six space. Okay, then to get to this next petal, I'm going to chain four and slip stitch into the next chain six space. And I'm going to repeat that six more times until I get back to the beginning of the round. Okay, now I'm on my last chain four. I'm going to slip stitch back into the first chain six space where my first petal is. I'm going to snip my yarn and pull it through. And there's my flower so far. I'm just going to weave in these ends again, again to save myself some hassle later. So now I have my flower and I'm going to need to get my beige colored yarn and we're going to attach this yarn in one of these chain four spaces that we have between each petal. Okay, so I'm gonna attach my yarn there. I'm then going to chain three and that's going to count as my first double crochet. I'm then going to double crochet two more into the same chain four space. I'm going to wrap around, go into the space, grab my yarn, pull it through, wrap around, go through the first two loops, wrap around, go through the second two loops. This is actually going to be our first corner space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to double crochet another three stitches into the same chain four space. So that's going to be the corner of my granny square. I'm then going to go across to the next chain four space. So between the next two petals, and I'm just going to double crochet three into that chain four space. I'm then going to find the next chain four space and I'm going to double crochet three into that one as well. This next one is actually going to be our um, next corner space. So I'm going to chain three again 
and I'm going to double crochet another three into the same space. Okay, so you can see I've actually got my first two corners finished. They're not going to sit flat completely just yet. So I'm now going to find my next chain four space and I'm going to repeat what I just did there. So I'm going to double crochet three and then in the next chain four space which is going to be another corner space I'm going to double crochet three I'm going to chain three and I'm going to double crochet three in the same space. In my next chain four space, so here, I'm going to double crochet three. The next chain four space is going to be my last corner space. So I'm going to double crochet three. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to double crochet three in the same space. And in my last chain four space, I am going to double crochet three. Now that I'm back to the beginning again, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of this chain three that I did at the start of the round. I'm then going to slip stitch the next two stitches until I get to the corner of my granny square. Just because it'll be easier to hide my yarn there. I'm going to snip my yarn, pull it through. So there's the first row of my actual granny square complete. The petals mostly hide it, um, but you can see that by crocheting between the petals, they've, we've actually made them stand up a little bit, which looks nice. So now to start the next row, I'm actually going to flip my granny square. We're now going to crochet on the back side and the front side on alternate rows. And this just makes sure that our granny square keeps its square shape, especially in the corners. So granny squares can sometimes twist a bit, especially for beginners. So we're going to try and alleviate that by crocheting our multicolored rows on the wrong side of the work. So I'm going to take one of my corners, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to attach my next color. So I've got a different shade of purple here, but whatever color, it could be the same color as the petals, and what I'm going to do now that I have attached in one corner, I'm just going to chain three and I'm going to single crochet back into the same corner stitch. Okay, so now I've got what looks like two stitches and a chain three in the middle. I'm then going to chain three again and I'm going to go into the next gap between, so where we can see we've got a double crochet three here and our next double crochet three. Well, between those we have a gap. So I'm going to go into the gap, pause by those two things joining, and I'm going to single crochet one. I'm going to chain three, and again, I'm going to go into the gap and single crochet one. When I get to my next corner, so I'm going to chain three, get there and now I'm at my next corner I'm going to single crochet one chain three single crochet one again in the same corner space and I'm now going to repeat that pattern so chain three single crochet chain three single crochet and in the corner stitches I'm going to do single crochet chain three single crochet all the way around until I get back to the beginning
So I've done my chain three, I'm actually going to single crochet back into the first chain made of this row. So I've slip stitched in there, I'm just going to snip my yarn, pull it through, and that's my first colour change done. So to start the next row, I'm just going to flip my work back to the right side, and I'm going to be attaching my beige colour back into one of these corners. I'm going to chain three, which is going to count as my first double crochet. I'm going to double crochet two into my corner space. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to double crochet three back into this corner space. So that's my first corner done. I'm now going to differ a bit from a normal granny square and I'm going to double crochet three into each of these chain three spaces here. I'm then going to repeat that in the next space. And in the final one, And then in my corner space, I'm going to double crochet three. And to chain three and double crochet back into the same corner space. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. So double crochet three in every space along and then double crochet three, chain three, double crochet three in each corner space. And again, I'm going to slip stitch back into the top of that chain three from the start of the round. And I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches to get it to the corner. I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to pull it through. And there is my third row of the actual granny square complete. I'm just going to weave in a few ends to save myself the trouble later. To start the next row, I'm going to flip it over again to the other side. And I'm going to attach my next colour to one of the corners. I'm then going to chain three. And I'm going to single crochet one into the same corner space. I'm then going to chain three. And I'm going to single crochet in the next space between these two sets of three double crochet. And I'm going to repeat that pattern, so chain three single crochet in the next gap and then in the corner spaces single crochet one chain three single crochet one all the way around until i get back to the beginning now we got to the beginning i'm just going to slip stitch back into that first stitch i'm going to snip my yarn and i'm going to pull that through so that's my second colour change done. To start the next round I'm going to flip my work back over and I'm going to attach my beige yarn into one of the corners. I'm going to chain three which is going to count as my first double crochet. I'm going to double crochet two into the corner space. We're going to chain three and I'm going to double crochet another three stitches into the same corner space. Now I'm going to double crochet three into this first chain three space. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. So I'm going to double crochet three into each of these chain three spaces. And then in the corner, I'm going to double crochet three chain three, double crochet three, all the way around until I get back to the beginning.
and I'm just going to slip stitch back into the top of this chain three. I'm going to slip stitch across to the corner. I'm going to snip my yarn, pull it through, and I'm just going to weave in a couple more ends before I move on. So now that I've finished that row, to start the next one, I'm going to flip my square over again. I'm going to attach my next color into the corner. And just like on the two previous color change rows, I'm going to start by chaining three. I'm going to single crochet one into that first stitch. I'm going to chain three. I'm going to single crochet into the next gap between these two sets of three double crochets. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. So chain three and then single crochet into the next gap all the way along until I reach the corner. In the corner, I'm going to do single crochet one, chain three, single crochet one. I'm gonna repeat that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And I'm just going to slip stitch back into this first stitch here. I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to pull that through. So now that row's done, I'm just going to flip my work back over to the right side. And now to start the next row, I'm just going to attach my beige yarn in the corner. I'm going to start by chaining three, which will count as my first double crochet. I'm going to double crochet two. I'm going to chain three and then double crochet three back into the same corner space. I'm going to double crochet three into this next chain three space. So I'm going to repeat this pattern. I'm going to double crochet three into all of these cha chain three spaces along. In the corner space, I'm going to double crochet three chain three, double crochet three, all in one space. And I'm going to continue that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. So now I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of this chain three. I'm going to slip stitch all the way over to the corner. I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to pull that through. And I'm just going to weave in a few more ends before I carry on. So now that I've finished that row, I'm just going to flip my work over again so that I'm working on the wrong side. I'm going to attach the next color in the corner. And I'm going to start, as with the previous color change rounds, by chaining three. And to single crochet into the same corner space. I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to single crochet into the next gap between these two sets of double crochet. And I'm going to follow that pattern, so chain three, single crochet in the next space, all the way along until I get to the next corner. And in the corner space, I'm going to single crochet one, chain three, single crochet one, as on all of the other color change rows. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. I'm just going to slip stitch back into this first stitch here. I'm going to snip my yarn and pull that through. 
and I'm going to flip my work back over to the other side to start the next round. So I'm going to start this next round by attaching my beige colour in one of the corners. Uh, so with all the previous rows in this colour I'm going to start by chaining three. I'm just going to count as my first double crochet. I'm going to double crochet two. I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to double crochet three back into the same corner space. And I'm going to double crochet three into the next chain three space. And I'm going to continue this pattern. So I'm going to double crochet three into all of these chain three spaces until I reach the corner. In the corner I'm going to double crochet three, chain three, double crochet three and I'm going to repeat that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. So now I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of this chain three. I'm going to slip stitch over to the corner. I'm going to snip the yarn and I'm going to pull it through. And again, I'm just going to weave in some ends. To start the final row of the granny square I'm just going to flip over. I'm going to attach the final colour in one of the corners. And once again I'm going to start by chaining three and single crocheting back into the same corner space. I'm going to chain three and single crochet into the first space between these sets of double crochet. And I'm going to follow that same pattern. So chain three and single crochet into the next gap. So just here, all the way along until I get to the corner space. In my corner space, I'm going to single crochet one, chain three, single crochet one. And I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And I'm just going to slip stitch back into this first chain. I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to pull it through. And I'm just going to weave in my ends and that is my granny square complete. So now I've finished my granny square and luckily I've weaved in my ends as I've gone along. So now I don't have the painful task of doing it all at once. So now what we're going to do is assemble the purse. However, if you wanted to, this would be the point at which you would block your granny square. So if you found that your granny square is not square, so if you've got any curling or any stretching or any twisting at the edges, this would be the point at which you would fix that. Okay, so mine is pretty square, so I'm not actually going to block mine. It's optional, it just guarantees the appearance of your of your square. I'm just going to show you how to do that. So first things first, you're going to want to ch check the instructions on your wool wash. This one is quite simple. You just dissolve a little bit in some cold water, soak the square for 15 minutes. You don't have to shake it about or agitate it. And then you just squeeze the square gently in a towel or something and then you're done. You would then place your square on to a blocking mat. I've put a link to all of the things I'm using in the description box below. As you can see, this square doesn't fit in the grid on my blocking mat, so I'd want to be using a ruler to just check that, um, especially if it's twisted a little bit or, or stretched at all in the corners, just to check that it is the same size all the way around. And then once you're happy with roughly where it is, then you just want to put it in place with your blocking pins. And then you'd want to put some down the edges as well, however many you need to make it sit in shape. 
Once you've pinned your square in place and you're happy with the dimensions of it, you would then just leave it to dry, probably for about 24 hours. And then once you take your pins out, it should keep its shape. So you want to have your square facing this way. And just to show you the basic pattern, we are going to be crocheting along these two edges here to make our purse shape. And then we're going to be crocheting along this edge here to make the flap of the purse. First things first, I'm going to crochet along this edge here. So I'm going to touch my yarn where we've created a corner here. I'm just going to check that they are level. You then want to hold your two sides together and you actually have several options here. You could just single crochet across, but I would do several crochets in each three chain space just to make sure it, uh, it stays. You could slip stitch all the way across as an alternative. You don't mind sewing a bit more. You could whip stitch across here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a zigzag slip stitch. So quite simply, I'm going to go into the chain three of the first side, so the front of my purse. I'm going to slip stitch in there. I'm then going to go into the back chain three space, the one on the, on the back of the purse, and I'm going to slip stitch in there. I'm then going to go into the front and slip stitch and I'm going to go into the back and slip stitch. So I've actually done four in that one chain three space. Okay, and I'm going to repeat that all the way along this side till I reach the middle. Now I reach the corner, I'm just going to slip stitch once in there through both of them. So now I've reached the middle and I'm just going to fold over and I'm going to see where I can crochet down this side as well. So my first step is going to be to slip stitch through these two corner pieces here. So the one I've just gone through on the back to this front corner space here. So I'm going to go through both of them. and slip stitch in there. And then I'm going to repeat the process back along this side. So I'm going to slip stitch in the front chain three space, slip stitch in the back chain three space, and then once more in the front, and once more in the back. And I'm going to repeat that all the way along. And I'm just going to slip stitch into this end section. I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to pull it through. So I'm just going to weave in one of my ends. The other end, I'm just going to weave up the side. I'm not going to snip my end. I'm actually just going to turn my purse the right way around. And now that this is somewhere near the middle, I'm going to use it to attach my button. So I'm going to come up here in the center to hide this seam where they all join. And I've actually just realized that my needle is too big to go through my buttonhole, so I'm actually going to have to switch to a slightly smaller yarn needle. So now that I'm in the centre, I'm going to attach my button. So I'm going to come up through the button, go back through at the other side. I'm just going to weave in my end. And there's my button attached. To start the flap, I'm going to insert my hook into this corner stitch again and I'm going to attach my yarn. I'm now going to work along the edge of my square by completing three single crochet into each chain three space. So now I have reached the top, I'm not actually going to single crochet into this chain space. I'm now going to chain a number of stitches 
so that it can wrap around my button. So I'm going to start off by trying eight and I'm just going to fold this over as though it were closed and wrap it round and just check the size. I think maybe one more. And then I'm going to go back along the other side by single crocheting three in every chain three space. Now once you've done a few stitches along this side, you can actually try your button hook and just check that you're happy with it. You can always go back and remove one of the chains or add another chain. I think I'm quite happy with that. It wants to be tight enough that it's not going to come undone, but not so tight that it's an effort to do. So I think I'm happy with that. So that was nine chains for mine. And I'm just going to carry on doing my three single crochet in each chain three space. And now I've reached the end, I'm just going to slip stitch into this final stitch here in the corner space. I'm going to snip my yarn. I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to turn it inside out again, just so that I can weave in those two ends. I'm going to turn it back the right way. So there's my finished coin purse. Here's another one I made earlier in a slightly different colour pattern, still using the purples, but just in a different order. So you can see they're the perfect size to fit in, you know, your debit cards or some cash, a few coins. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see any of my future videos. I upload new crochet videos every weekend and I'll see you in the next one.